Here are three mistakes you want to avoid when coming to the net in singles. Mistake number one, you have a low volley and you hit it cross court. Low volleys have to go up off of your racket just to clear the net, which means it's very difficult to win the point outright with a low volley. It's tough to win the point volleying up, which means your opponent is going to run your shot down. And when you're coming forward and you have a low volley, you hit it cross court, your momentum pulls you over even after you hit the shot, and it takes a while to get over, and then your opponent beats you down the line. So taking a low volley cross court gets you out of position for your opponent's next shot. The second problem with hitting low volleys cross court is you end up hitting the ball out a lot. Since the court is shorter, it's a shorter distance at a sharp angle like this, what you end up doing is hitting the ball into the doubles alley very often. Here's the solution. Low volleys straight ahead. Keep the ball in front of you. Yes, you're not going to end the point generally with this shot, but you make sure that you kind of kick the can down the road and are in position for their next shot. You keep the ball in front of you, you close off the net, you've moved your opponent to the side you're on, that makes it easy to bisect the down the line and cross court passing shot, and you just make sure that you're not in a bad position. Look, low volleys are difficult. Don't give them the chance to pass you down the line or just not even have to do anything because you missed the shot. Hit low volleys down the line, keep it in front of you, it's called HTL, hold the line. Keep the ball in front of you, you're going to win a lot more points. All right, let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to take low balls and I'm just going to keep them in front of me with the ball machine. Now mistake number two is choosing to hit an overhead rather than a high volley, and I'll show you what I mean. So in my experience, players have two types of volleys. They have a low volley and they have a medium volley. But anytime the ball gets up here, they choose overhead and you see the ball come to them. It's a high ball, but they end up scrunching their arm because the ball actually wasn't high enough. When you have a high ball, it doesn't necessarily mean it's an overhead. The ball needs to be really dropping for you to have the time to hit an overhead. When the ball is high, but doesn't get much higher than the contact, then it's actually a high volley. Now the key to a high volley is set your racket high and finish high. You want to move your racket like your racket is on a bookshelf and you're moving your racket along that bookshelf. One of the ways to actually help you do that is to use your off hand. Turn and put your left hand, if you're right handed, put your non-hitting hand out in front of you. That'll give you a place to move your racket. If your non-hitting hand is down, since our arms tend to find each other, your racket will find the other hand and it'll force your racket to go down. In my experience, very few recreational players have their non-hitting hand down and then hit through a high volley. They tend to find the other hand. So use that to your advantage, put the other hand up, so then when you find the other hand, you're moving your racket forward through the shot. When you have a high ball, it's not necessarily an overhead. Let me show you what a high ball looks like when you choose a high volley.
Now the third and final mistake is hitting overheads way too hard. You don't have to blast this shot. Just a simple placement off to the side is gonna help you win the point. Think about it from a serving standpoint. Let's say you were to serve from the service line. Would you have to hit your fastest serve if you were serving from the service line to hit an ace on your opponent? Absolutely not. And instead of just hitting in the service box, now you get the whole court. So obviously just with that rationale, it makes no sense to have your percentage and your consistency plummet just so that you can say that your overhead is 100 miles an hour. When that ball goes up into the air, the chances of you winning the point will increase if you cut your over, overhead speed in half and you just place the shot. All right, let me show you what a 50% speed overhead looks like. Now, if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or if you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment, playercourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Really simple. When you come forward in singles and you have a low volley, keep the ball in front of you. Keep your opponent in front of you. It's going to be so much easier to win that point. Number two. When you have a high forehand volley, it's not necessarily an overhead. You could see the difference in the feed I gave myself for that mistake number two, the high volley versus the overhead. The second one was much higher. If the ball is a medium height, like a bad lob that doesn't really get up super high, then it's most likely a high volley and you wanna hit through that, use your non-hitting hand to give your racket a guide, send the ball forward, and gravity easily brings that ball down into the court. And number three, stop hitting your overheads to it so hard. Just 50% and you're just looking to angle it off slightly to a side. And if you copy these drills and these concepts, there's no doubt. You're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.